Hi there, my name is Nils with Learn to DIY, and in this video I'll be showing you how to replace the stereo in your 2014 to 2021 Toyota Tundra. Now the reason I decided to do this DIY video is because I called around to some car stereo shops and the prices I was getting quoted were anywhere from $825 to $1000 to have a similar setup to what I've got here. I actually installed all of this for $313 out the door, that's including everything which is obviously a much better deal. If you buy everything brand new and just kind of go with the stock options for all of this to get a nice set, you're looking at about $650 to do this. So you're gonna save anywhere from 200 to 400 or more dollars depending on what kinds of deals you get. Now I have never done this before. I have not installed a stereo, especially nothing quite like this. And it's not something that you can do in an hour if you've never done it before, but it is something that you can work through and you can have a DIY version that comes out crisp, professional, and looks really good. So I've got links in the description below for everything that I used as well as some alternate options. So you might wanna check those out. And I would recommend that you check out eBay or check out your local classifieds. The reason I paid 313 is because I got some of the stuff on Amazon, some on eBay, and some from a friend who got me a really good discount on the stereo. To take it out, it's actually really simple. There's just a few steps. I highly recommend that you disconnect the power from your battery first, just to prevent any issues. Next, we're gonna take the shifter and just remove it like this, just thread it off. Okay. Once that's off, we're going to get back here. If you have some pry bars like this, these are actually a really cheap kit. I'll put a link in the description below if you need to get a kit like this, but I'm gonna take one of these pry bars and start to pry this part right here away. There we go. Okay. So with that loose, we can pull this whole console out. Now with the centerpiece out of the way, if you pop open your plugs here, you can actually just carefully grab underneath here and just pull this whole piece right out. It's gonna be connected by some wires. We'll just leave those in place. And with that out of the way, we can reach underneath here from the center and kind of just pull that whole piece right out too. It's up to you if you want to remove this. I'm just gonna take this off for now and just set this aside for now. And now we have access to the bottom of the stereo. So here underneath, there are four bolts that you're gonna need to remove. There's one here and one opposite here on the other side. And then in the back behind it, you can kind of see back there, there's another one and same on the other side. So to remove this, I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter driver and I've got a six inch extender on there. Take these out. And that one doesn't come out, so I'm just gonna see if I can grab it with my fingers. And if you can't get these all the way out, these back ones, then you can actually still remove the stereo and then they'll just kind of fall out. I'd rather pull it out if I can. There we go. I think I got it. All right, I'll leave that one in for the moment. Grab this one. You can see everything kind of got loose there. Now with those four removed, you can just pull the whole thing straight back toward you. There we go. And there goes that last one that I mentioned. So with the stereo pulled out, we're gonna remove anything that's connected to the vehicle itself, basically. So that's that one, that one, and they're all pretty easy. Just push the pins and pull them out. Okay, and then lastly, this bottom one here. Just push in the pin, pop it out, and there goes the old stereo. Good riddance. With the old stereo out, we're ready to go ahead and put the new one in place. And unfortunately, it's not a simple plug and play thing, but there are some kits that will make your life a lot easier. Now be sure to check the links in the description below. I went through and did the research on everything that you're gonna need to do this, and I will put links to those things, as well as some alternatives that you can check out so you can get the best deal possible on this. And for this one, we're gonna use the iDatalink Maestro RR. This is basically a universal adapter that allows you to put an aftermarket stereo into your factory slot here. And then to make that personalized basically or custom for the Toyota for 2014 and up for these Tundras, we've got the T0 or TO2 here, and that's gonna make it so that your steering wheel controls work, it'll connect with your cameras, um, it'll give you a few extra options like speedometer info and things like that as well that you don't actually get with the factory radio. In addition, there are a couple more pieces that you're gonna need, some adapters and some wiring to connect USB, um, and then we've got the actual faceplate here, and this one matches really well. 
So it'll look really slick up there when it's all done. And then last and perhaps most importantly is the actual stereo unit. Once I unboxed all of the adapters and had everything ready to go, I then had to flash the firmware onto this little maestro here. And it's pretty slick. There's actually a little link right on the back here that you can go to, and then you can flash it for your specific vehicle. It'll give you download instructions and everything you need to use that alongside the specific adapter kit that you purchase. So now that that's done, I was actually able to print out the wiring diagram and you look at this and you think, my goodness, this is a bit overwhelming, but it walks you through step-by-step step each of the pieces and parts, uh, what goes together, and then it gives you the actual step-by-step -step instructions here as well. So I've got all those ready to go and now it's just a matter of getting everything connected and connecting A to B and B to C so the first step, and maybe the most intimidating one, is really just getting all of your wires connected and finding out which wires from your factory set go to which wires on your adapter kit. And so basically I've got two sets here. This is the one that came with the new stereo, and then this other big bundle here in my other hand is the one that came with the Maestro. This is the RR kit. And so there's this whole mess of wires here and everything. And I'm just using this diagram to go through wire by wire and say which one is which. And then what I do is I just snip the end of one of the wires. So let's say, for example, if I had um, one of these wires here, I would just use my wire snips to snip off and expose a little bit of the wire, maybe about a half inch or three quarters of an inch, and then match it up on the harness here, the one with the Maestro. And those ones are already pre-cut. And then I just take a bit of electrical tape, maybe an inch and a half, uh, cut it with some scissors, wrap it up nice and tight and make sure it's secure and not going anywhere, and then move on to the next wire. So I've gone through and I've already done this whole section here, step one, and now I'm about to hook up the reverse cam. Now to connect the backup camera in the Tundra, there's a few pieces that need to go together. Uh, this set here comes with the Maestro RR, or actually I believe this comes with the TO2 kit. So you've got a big white plug here, a little black one and a yellow RCA down there, and it's labeled backup camera. And so coming out of the universal adapter for the Maestro, there's this little black one, which is closest to the three big harnesses. So one plugs in there like so, and then this one plugs into the reverse camera, and there's only one that it fits, which is nice. And so it looks like it'll go this way, and that'll plug right in here from the truck itself. So now that we've got steps one and two done, step three is to go ahead and connect the three harnesses to the factory stuff. And again, they all kind of have their matching parts. So they'll click in. There we go, that one's in. And then this one looks to go this way, it clicks in. And then lastly, this one goes this way. Okay, so I've got one, two, three hooked up. Got the reverse camera hooked up. Okay, next up on mine at least is for step four. We're gonna unplug the black two pin connector. This is already connected here in the TO2. So I'm gonna remove that. Then I'm gonna take this little OBD2 connector, which has a little black two pin connection and plug that where I had just unplugged the other one. So right in here like so. Okay. Then we're gonna plug the white two pin connector into the OBD2 harness. So that one is right down here. So white to white, just like that. And then lastly, we connect the OBD2 to the vehicle itself. And that's actually down here underneath. Now for the other end of the ODB2 cable, we're gonna need to connect that into the ODB2 port here on the Tundra. It's down here by your pedals, and it's got a pretty unique shape here as you can see. So I'm just gonna, oops, just gonna plug that right into the port here. And it snaps in. And then I'm gonna try to run this wire, tuck it up underneath so it's out of the way and run it all the way along up towards the stereo. So now we're ready to connect everything to the back of the new stereo unit. And this part actually goes pretty quickly. So we've got the main harness that we've already done all the wiring for. So we're gonna plug that in here. Make sure that's insecure. Not insecure, but insecurely, you know what I'm saying. Okay, next we're gonna hook up our backup camera. And we have one here that's called a rear view camera. So I'm gonna plug that in here. Then after that, we've got, let's see, several more here. So we've got uh, the speakers themselves. So we should have a white and a gray. 
And on this one, I'm really curious about this one because it only has a connection for front. This is an amplified system, so hopefully that will still work out, but I wanna make sure we still have rear and front fade. And according to this, the RCA input for the left is the white one. So I'm gonna put that over here, white to white there, and then the gray goes in the red. And it's marked right on the back of the unit here, left and right. Okay, um, with those in, let's see, next we've got our audio video in. And I've got a whole set of audio and video. I'm not gonna be putting any video put inputs into here. So I purchased this aftermarket um, RCA to headphone jack, the eighth inch jack. So I'm just gonna wire these in here and we'll skip the yellow, which is the video. So just the silver to white, red to red. And then that goes in AV in here. All right, we've also got to connect the USB extenders here where we can do some uh, plugging in of the iPhones or Androids. All right, so here's the Maestro and we've got a few connectors down here that all need to go into it. All right, so we've got the, on the one side, we've got the green connector and then next to it, uh, let's see, right there, we've got the three pin black. Okay, and then on the opposite side, we've got our larger data, data pin harness here. Okay, that goes in. Then we have the data cable that runs from in between the maestro and the stereo. That one plugs in there, the four pin. And then there's a spot for that right here on the back of the stereo. The one last piece that we could do, I'm gonna see if this works without it, but there is a microphone. Now there's already a microphone in the truck. Um, I can take hands-free calls already, so I'd prefer not to have to do this and run a new wire and everything. But I do have the option here to plug in this microphone and then connect this onto my, my visor, for example. So, and then my next step is to put the battery, connect the battery back up to the truck. I'm gonna power everything on and then just test it out. So before we put anything back, we wanna test it, make sure everything's working as expected. And then if it looks good, we'll put it all back together. Okay, we've got power to the unit. Maestro's blinking, JVC, all right, here we go. Okay, we've got some good news. I've turned it on and everything is connected and it's working awesome. So we've got great audio and it actually has f the full fade. It has all the, this particular stereo has all kinds of really cool features. So this is really nice. Um, I've got my music playing here. Okay, so that works really well. And then right now, this is another feature I love about this. This is completely wireless. So it's doing a wireless uh, Apple CarPlay from here, which is super cool. It's basically connecting to the Wi-Fi that the stereo is outputting. So that is really nice just to not have to connect any wires, get in and then have it mirror everything. So very nice there. Okay, I wanna take just a moment and talk about wiring solutions. There were quite a few that I was able to come up with um, in this particular scenario here. So number one, I needed a way to get the ODBC2 um, port to come from underneath here where it connects under the steering wheel by the pedals and come through here. So I've got kind of a makeshift way and this is the one I'm least happy with, but most of these came out pretty good. So I got a Forstner bit here and I drilled a three quarter inch hole through the underside, basically the top of where the USB ports and the cigarette, cigarette lighters are. And so that way you can't really see it. It's not a thing you'll ever be able to see unless you get down and look under like this. So it's really out of the way, which is nice. And then I also use that same one to feed through my ex USB extensions. So these are coming up through here along with the ODB2 port. Um, they're going all the way down through here. They come through this section right here and then they go um, down. Yeah, here's the other one. So all three of these and then they go down through out this way and then out to this uh, out this little hole right here. So that's where a lot of the stuff got taken care of. 
Another one that I ended up doing was I drilled a half inch hole right through here. And I found that a half inch drill bit is perfect for fitting this little microphone in here that comes with the stereo. So you wanna double check that with your stereo, but all I had to do was snap off the little ring that holds the, uh, the clip on. So there's a little ball joint that connects into this clip and I just snap that off because I'm not gonna use it. Uh, push that through here and it looks really slick. There's really nothing to see, which is good. So it's in a great direction. Uh, works for both the passenger and the driver to speak into it and that's good. That's it. So all the wiring is completely done. Now it's just a matter of reassembling and then also using my new uh, faceplate here, the new holder, so that I can get this all in place. So I'm gonna do that now and see how this goes. So I've got everything kind of crammed back in here now and I'm just gonna see if we can get it all fit. It's a lot of stuff pushed back in here. Okay. Nice thing is once you get the first one in, it holds. So the rest should be easier. So that's back in. And we have our climate control unit. Plug that back in here, and there, and there. And there we go. And this is just a bunch of clips. And with that, finally, this thing is complete. That is super cool. So I've got a nice stereo here. Now there are a lot of cool features that you can get with the stereos these days. This one's obviously got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Um, there's steering wheel buttons that are programmed into this to where I can see my tachometer, my speedometer, fuel gauges. I can click over here. I can see my zero to 60 times, braking info, quarter mile, all this kind of cool stuff that you get with this. I can even switch over and see I go over this way, I can see my tire pressure, um, all kinds of great information about the battery, all that sort of thing. And you get all of that as part of the ODB2 connection that comes with this. Just want to reiterate, I've never done this install before uh, or installs in general. And with the instructions that you can get and the resources online, you can work your way through this and do a DIY install to save yourself hundreds of dollars. If you're not comfortable with that, you've always got the option to take it to a professional. Now, if you wanna see another upgrade I did to this Tundra, you can check out how I basically de-chromed the whole front and all of the chrome on this vehicle and did that in one afternoon and it looks so much better and personally, I'm a big fan of it. You can check that video out right here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.